Hey, everybody. We are getting started here, and I'm super excited because um, we are going to be talking all about fair follow up and how to um, make calls. I'm going to make my light. Oh, look how much nicer the light looks when I actually have this, them shining in my eyes. Anyway, I'm really excited because we're going to be talking a little bit about how to follow up with fair leads or um, any kind of leads that you get at different vendor events when you're out and about. I think sometimes it's really easy to just gather leads or pass out your name and number or pass out the catalog and not really have a lot of follow-up. So I'm hoping that some of you guys watch this before you um, attend an event because like we talked about last week or a couple weeks ago when we first trained on um, fair events is that you want to make sure you get everyone's name and number. And you know one of the easiest ways to do that is when you're at those events you have your little lead slips and um, as you get to chatting with them just make sure you write down their info um, and just say oh hey my name is you know, Alyssa with Tupperware what's your name and just write their name down and then as you keep talking you're going to take notes what do they like what don't they like what are they interested in whatever whatever kind of you talked about and then you can say oh I'd love to follow up with you and you know we have this great event coming up I want to invite you to um, which could be any one of our next events coming up right now. I know we have particular ones that are tied to the fair and um, um, this week and next week we have three events going on and um, be able to invite them to one of them or all of them, um, but you need their number to remind them. So I just say, oh, hey, I'd love to send you a text the day before just to remind you um, about it. Your number's 209 and then you get the rest of their number. Um, so that's the easiest way to just grab their um, information right then and there. And then as they walk away write yourself some notes so you don't forget who they are um, you know describe them whatever whatever you can do to remember them is the best thing to do and so that way when you go to follow up with them you're not um, you're not just calling randomly and not knowing and remembering who they are so what I want to share with you today is kind of how do you get on the phone and follow up with these people and what can you do and say to really um, boost your responses. So the first thing you want to do is um, kind of organize your leads. I always do them in like most interested to least interested um, because people lose interest about 10% of their interest is lost every single day. So if I was 50% excited today, tomorrow I'll be 40, the next 30, 20, 10. Pretty soon I forgot that I even visited you. So you want to follow up really quickly, um, usually within 24 to 48 hours. Now I know when there's a weekend, you might not want to call on a Sunday, so maybe call on a Monday or Tuesday if you did it on a Saturday. Um, but don't wait longer than Tuesday to call people because they forget. They get busy. They have other things going on. Um, and then the other thing is, is you want to have a uh, jot down with, like, well, first of all, schedule your time to follow up because I think sometimes we say we're going to, oh, I'll call them tomorrow, I'll do this, whatever. But if it's not actually scheduled in your calendar, you might not remember to do it. So um, I would definitely schedule it, okay? Get it scheduled, decide when you're going to do your follow up following your event that you work. And then um, when you are following up with them, Take some really detailed notes. So if I get if I get on the phone with my stack of leads and I'm dating and or getting on the phone with my stack of leads, excuse me, and I the phone rings and there's no answer, I'll write down on that lead slip the date and the time and that there was no answer. Um, and if I left a message, depending on what it was, what my conversation was with them originally, I might um, you know write down. I left him a message regarding XYZ or I didn't leave a message, whatever. But you want to take some detailed notes because it could be that when you called back on a Monday night at seven o'clock, maybe every Monday they're at swim lessons with their kid. So you don't want to call again on a Monday at seven o'clock just in case they have some recurring um, event that happens every Monday at seven o'clock. So what you want to do is you want to pick and choose or you want to take notes on that so that the next time you try to follow up with that lead, you're calling at a different time of day or a different day of the week. So let's say you call again on Tuesday at seven o'clock, no answer. Maybe it's their dinner time. Maybe um, they work until seven o'clock. Maybe they're going to bed at seven o'clock. So you want to try to change up the day and time if you're not reaching them. So that's the first tip that I would give you. Next thing is if you're kind of nervous about getting on the phone with anybody, um, not sure what you're going to say, 
practice a little bit beforehand with yourself and, and maybe even just get out your phone or your iPad, put it on the camera and smile as you practice. Because the more you practice a few times with the word choices and a smile on your face, the easier it is going to be to do it with real people and they can hear your smile. If you aren't smiling and you're kind of down and you're a little tired, you're gonna sound it in your voice, but when you're smiling and you're peppy and you're ready to go, it definitely makes a big difference when you get on the phone, even if they can't see your face. The other thing that you can do is you can very easily um, trick people into thinking that you are excited. Like I've talked about a million times, I know you've all heard this, Is run around your kitchen table once or twice, you'll be out of breath and you'll sound um, excited because you're kind of winded <laughs> and then they'll think that you're excited even if you're super nervous. And the best part is if you are nervous and your voice is kind of shaky, if you're out of breath, they can't hear that because all they hear is the panting. Um, <laughs> And I know that sounds funny, but it's true. And right now I'm out of breath because I'm super pregnant. And so, right, I sound more excited than I probably am right now because I am out of breath. Um, just talking a lot gets me out of breath at this stage of my life. I can't wait till it's over. So um, that's the second tip. Then the third thing I would say is make sure you have with you your um, form, your four steps of phone call, basically sheet. And I'm going to post it again for you guys in the file so you'll have it. Um, but it's called four steps of a phone call. And um, basically, um, it's form and leap. And actually, that's probably the part that I will um, post for you guys. And basically, you want to make sure that you get to know your customers better. Because when you're out at a vendor event or at the fair or wherever, you have a little time to chat with them, but not a ton. So you really want to ask more questions and get to know them a little bit better before you dive right into what you were talking about. Now, granted, if you um, had a really deep conversation with them, not deep, but a, a, a detailed conversation about what other particular product they are interested in or whatever it might be, then it's easier to get on the phone with them, right? Um, and easier to follow up with them. But if you did it because you were in a hurry and maybe there was other people walking up or they were in a hurry, you wanna make sure you can kind of get to know them a little bit before you jump right into selling them something or telling them to date a party or whatever it is. So what you'll do is you'll take your um, form and on the back side of their little um, lead slip, you wanna kind of get to know them a little bit better. So form stands for family occupation, recreation, and message. And so, you know, maybe you saw they had kids there that night and that was on your lead slip. So maybe you talk, so when you're talking with them, you're gonna find out a little bit more about their family. Same thing about their occupation, their job. What do they do for fun? And then you're gonna create a message. So for example, I'm just gonna kind of role play with you guys is, if I didn't know much about you, because I only saw that you were at the, you know, we just kind of chatted at the fair, I would ask some detailed questions. So I would, and I start with kind of a generic question and then I get really detailed, okay? So for example, let's pretend I was out at the fair with a lead and I'm calling it back, ring, 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 the answer, hey, it's Alyssa with Tupperware, I met you out at the fair and I'm super excited because I just wanted to kind of follow up with you and re-invite you to our sorbet social that we're doing on Wednesday night. I know you were really interested, and so I just wanted to follow up. Um, now, I remember when we were at the fair, you had a little one in the stroller and a, like a teenager, but I think you said you had a couple other kids, am I right? And they say, yeah, and they start telling me, oh, what are their ages? Okay, so I start with kind of generic, and then I get real specific. Oh, what are their ages? Oh, do they all live at home with you? Do you have, are they in high school? Do you have to bring kids to school? Where do they go to school? Okay, so, so on. And then I say, oh, and do you stay at home with them during the day or do you work outside of the home? Oh, where do you work? Tell me about that. What do you do there? Do you have coworkers? Or are you in the office by yourself? Notice how I'm getting very, very specific. Because the more questions you ask about people, the more they like to talk about themselves, the good stuff and the bad stuff, right? They like to tell you that they um, hate their job, they really do. Um, especially if they hate their coworkers, right? So being able to 
get that information. And then I would say, oh my gosh, so what do you guys like to do for fun? With that big of an age gap in your kids, do you guys like to do stuff for fun? Does your oldest babysit a lot? I know mine does. Um, what kind of other things that you do for fun? So you kind of get like real specific. Oh, where do you go camping? You know, all those things. And then you're going to create a message. So I'm actually using a specific person who I have in mind, who I'm going to follow up with tomorrow that I met on Saturday um, at Park Feet in Escalon. And so what I would say is I would say, gosh, you know, have you thought any more about the opportunity of Tupperware and making money in it? Because I know we briefly talked about it and with your schedule, it seems like something that might interest you. Have you thought any more about it? answer is always no, or I don't know, or I kind of did, or I talked to my husband or boyfriend or fill in the blank and they're not interested or don't want me to or whatever. Right. So then I would say, gosh, I totally understand how you feel. I did not want to be a Tupperware lady either. Um, so I get it. Um, so then now that she's kind of giving you like a, um, a no in a sense. I didn't ask her to have a party. I didn't ask her to join my team. I'm just going to ask if she's thought any more about it. Okay. So when you change your word choices from being, will you have a party or, um, when will you have a party and you just are having conversation with people, it's a lot easier to get yeses out of them because it's a conversation. It's not a, will you do something for me? Okay. So when she says, I haven't really thought about it anymore or, my husband isn't really thrilled about it, or I just don't know how many people I could get at my house. Whatever the, the answer is, the excuse of why she hasn't thought anymore about it, or why she's not thinking she wants to anymore, that's when I LEAP, okay? And LEAP stands for listen, empathize, ask questions, and produce a solution. So I'm going to listen. So when she tells me, oh, I haven't really thought about it anymore, or my boyfriend, whatever, okay? So, and I'm making this up because I haven't spoken to her yet. So honestly, this is all me. I mean, this is a real person I'm talking about, but her excuse is going to be just whatever I think of. So let's say she just says, you know, it's not really something that her um, boyfriend was really excited about. She hasn't really thought about it anymore. She's not sure. Then I would listen. And listening is all about kind of repeating back their issue in different words. So I would say something like, gosh, I totally, um, so wait, so you're feeling like maybe your boyfriend wouldn't be super excited about you having a job like this. Um, and then she would say, yeah, cause you know, I'd be gone at night and blah, 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 right. She will come up with some other thing. So then you're going to empathize and that's feel felt found. Um, and for those of you who've heard me talk about this so many times, you know, feel felt found. And so empathizing is, I know how you feel. I, I know exactly how you feel because I kind of thought the same thing. Like I'm going to be gone at night. I'm not going to have um, any social life. What is it going to be like? Right. Um, I felt exactly the same way when I was getting started and thinking about it. And what I found is I actually had more flexibility because I can decide when I want to work and when I don't want to work. There isn't somebody telling me that I have to come in on a Sunday and I found out on Friday that I have to be there on Sunday all day long or that um, I have to work overtime because of X, Y, Z. Um, I get to decide those things. So if I have something going on with my family, I can just say no, I, I can't do it. Um, and so that's something that I really, really love about this. So let me ask you, okay, so then you're going to, after you empathize, you're going to ask those questions. So let me ask you, is it, is he, does, do you like being home every evening? Is it just that he'd be worried you'd be gone every night of the week? Tell me a little bit more. Okay. So now you're asking some more questions that's going to get them interacting it's probably that they think it's going to be every single night of the week to make money, or they think that um, it has to be weeknights or they, whatever it is. Right. Um, so then you're going to keep asking questions until you, kind of, until you kind of figure out what the real issue is. And let's say it's just because, you know, he works nights um, every weeknight and you got to be home with the kids. Okay. Let's use that as the example. Let's just say that's it. So then I would, kind of, I would try to come up with a solution to help her. So for example, let's say it's, my husband works nights and, um, you know, I just don't know how we would be able to do it with my little one. So I would ask another question. I'd say, so tell me your oldest who's 21, right? Would you be able to have her babysit a couple nights a week? Or would it be easier for you to maybe do your two parties a week on a Saturday when dad is home? 
and you could do like one at 10 a.m. and one at two or one at two and one at seven, and you're only really gone for one day. What do you think about that? So now I'm coming up with a solution that kind of negates their issue. How can they say no to that? Free babysitting if it's a weeknight, or on a Saturday you can just do it all in one day and you still have your weeknights free. So you are gonna come up with a solution. Now you might have to leap more than one time because they might have another excuse of why that doesn't work. Oh, well, my, my 21 year old has her own life. She doesn't really like babysitting. Saturdays are kind of crazy for us. That's usually our only day home together. So doing two on a Saturday would be tough. So then you're gonna leap again. Oh, I get it. Well, let's think about what we could do instead. So maybe it's one Saturday, one Sunday, or maybe it's one night that you're, um, Team does babysitting and you do a Saturday morning or a Saturday evening so that you can have the rest of the day free with your hubby. What, work, what, what do you think is going to work best for your family? And you know, the best thing about Tupperware is that you could give it a try for 60 days and if it doesn't work out for your family and what you've got going on, that's okay. You can just say, you know what, it's not really working. I'd rather be a host again and just go right back into my date book as a host. But then at least, you know, you tried it and you gave it your all. And that usually relieves the pressure and you can get them to join you at some event or coming to coffee with me or whatever. Now I know I used a recruiting um, example, but you can do the same thing with partying. So they can't do a party because it's late, you know, they don't have a lot of friends. You're gonna just ask questions and figure it out. One of the gals who, um, the same gal actually, who is really interested in the opportunity um, had actually come up and just said, I kind of think I want to have a party, but I don't really know. That. Or no, she didn't even say that. She just came up and was getting free sorbet. And I said, we started talking and she, I told her about a Tupperware party and what she could um, get from it. And she was kind of like, I don't really know. I, I don't know if I could get enough people. We just moved here from the Bay Area. And I said, well, you can get all of your orders online from people from the Bay Area. And then our stand-up party is like seven to 10 people. Do you think you could gather seven to 10 people that live nearby? Oh, I could get seven people easy. I was thinking I needed like 20, 25. Like, nope, it's just seven. Oh, I could do that. So this whole weight lifted off because she just figured she had to have a big giant party to make it worth it. Well, all her orders will come from out online and then she can just have a party with the five to seven people that are here in town that she knows. And I said, and I'll do a little gift for anybody who brings a buddy. Um, that you don't know, I'll have a little gift. And she was just like, oh my goodness, such a great idea. So sometimes we have to overcome their, their fears because they're afraid. They're afraid that they won't have a good enough party. They're afraid that they won't um, have enough uh, um, food. They're afraid that their house isn't big enough. They're afraid. They just are worried that it's not going to turn out the way it should. And if we just overcome their objections, it's really, really easy um, for them to kind of release that and be like, oh, okay, I can do that. Um, and if it's still a no, if they keep saying no, we don't want to be totally badgering them, right? And I don't know about you, but through this conversation, I'm sure you can all agree that, that none of that felt like badgering, right? I'm just asking questions and trying to come up with a way that works for them because it's not about me dating a party. It's about, you know, I know it could really help you with your um, time and money saving. I know it can really help you because I know that you're wanting to get back to um, cooking home cooked meals in this, during the school year. And it's kind of crazy, right? So you want to make sure it's always about them and what they're needing, not about you and needing a Tupperware party. Um, and then if it's still a no, I always, my final question always is, is it no for now or is it no forever? And Oftentimes it's just no for now, right? Like there's very few people who will never have a Tupperware party or never, you know, um, come to a, a, an event to check things out, right? Very few people. So if it's no for now, when would be a better time for me to call you back, right? So that, that's what I ask. When would be a better time for me to call you back? When are you thinking it might be better for you? And then they're going to say a very broad, generic time frame. They're usually like, oh, call me back after school starts or call me back in fall or call me back next spring or whatever, right? 
but you, it's your job to get really specific, okay? So if they say, call me back after school starts, you say, oh, okay, so when does school start for your kids? Oh, it starts August 15, 13, whatever. Okay, so are you wanting me to wait until after you get the first week through? Do you want me to call you? Do you want to hold your party right after school starts so all the moms who are um, relieved that their kids are gone, they can have a little Tupper or Mimosa party in the morning? Or are you wanting me to call you that first week of school when kids are in school so we can schedule something for a little bit later? What, what does that mean for you? Because if I assume my way, I'm gonna be wrong. <laughs> every single time um, because both of those answers would be perfectly good for me I'd be like heck yeah let's have a mimosa party we're celebrating the kids are gone or I might and who knows maybe she was thinking call me after school starts but when you say call me for the first week of school to have a mimosa celebration celebratory party that the kids are back at school man she might change her mind and say yeah give me a call at the end of July and we'll set something up for that first week or give me a call the first week of August so we can set something up for the first week of school whatever it is, but you've got to come up with some fun solutions. So um, what I wanted, the other thing I wanted to share with you is some, some really good word choices. The word party kind of scares people off, right? So you want to talk about cooking classes. I'm going to teach you. I'd love to come over and share with you. Okay. So you want to use teach, share, cooking class. Okay. Versus want to have a party. Okay. So that's one thing. The other thing is have a few different things that people haven't heard of before that you're willing to do, like a mimosa during school time party, right? Or a, a, a celebratory mimosa gathering. Okay, so have fun with those word choices. Maybe it's a healthy start cooking class and you're gonna do omelets and breakfast maker. Maybe it's a um, appetizers in, in minutes um, or meals in minutes or dinner time dilemma solutions or um, you're gonna be doing breakfast for dinner. I mean, there's so many different things that you, can, that you can play on words with our products. Maybe it's a no waste lunch um, party, right? Or a no, waste, um, a no waste school lunches, okay? And right now we have some of our school lunch products on sale that make it a no waste lunch, right? That's what my No More Manic Mondays is gonna be all about tonight, guys. So, how can you really um, hone in on some of those things that pe those those solutions that people are looking for? If you talk about the solutions, not just like one particular product that you're in love with, because product, okay, if you get on the phone and you're saying, oh, let's have a, a micro pro grill party, nobody knows what that means, and that doesn't solve any problems, okay? You've got to solve a problem they have in their life with a solution that Tupperware brings them, okay? So the no waste, right? How many people are out in the next week and a half stocking their pantries with Ziploc baggies of every shape and size that will be gone in the first month of school? Throw away, um, like just like individual packs of throw away, you know, snacky things that their kids eat half of and then they throw away, right? Um, and you're creating tons of waste that way. Um, water bottles that you're going to just use once and throw away, right? So that's a problem that parents have. They don't even realize how much money they're spending. We have the solution. So if we talk about solving the problem and not about the product that they have to buy, but we talk about solving the solution as a no waste um, lunch time, how would you like to have a no waste lunch time and figure out how we can do that for your, you and your kids? Now they're hooked and intrigued, right? And they're gonna to want to have friends together to learn about that. So really having a, a purpose in your parties, your passion. Think about what's going on during that time of year. Right now, it's middle of July and it's all back to school stuff. I just got a letter from my kid's school telling me what we need. People are gonna start shopping this week for backpacks, lunch packs, all that. And if we're not on it, they're going to have already purchased, unwrapped all of the crapperware. And by the time they realize that it's crapperware, because after five, four or five dishwashes, right, it's going to be melted. It's going to be destroyed. And that will be the second week of August. And you know what will happen? They're going to become crawling back, wondering where that sale is that they can't get anymore. So if we don't share it now, how are we going to be able to really solve those problems for our customers, right? And 
It's not our job to buy bulk and wait until they figure it out and set it, sell it off. Nope, don't do it because it's not worth your money or your time. Just make, let them order the two packables that are in the catalog, right, when it time, comes time. But now they're going to get the whole set. So that's really um, what your story should be when you are sharing out and about at these events. What can you share to really, really get them um, excited? And when you follow up with them, how are you going to help solve those problems that they have every day in their home? Um, whether it's dinner dilemmas, they're at home, they're not sure what to make for dinner, nothing's thawed, um, they don't have a quick solution. What are you going to share with them to help them solve that problem? And that is what gets people to date parties and join Tupperware. So on that note, I'm going to let you guys ask any questions. Um, before I stop recording because sometimes we get really good ones. So, is there any questions? You can raise your hand if you want me to unmute you. Go ahead, April, what's your question? Okay, so I'm, I'm fired. What was the P in LEAP? Oh, you're not fired. It's produce a solution. Oh, produce a solution, okay. Yeah. I said it really fast. So. Um, I'll go over those. I'll repeat them. So form is family, occupation, recreation, message, and uh, leap is listen, empathize, ask questions, and produce a solution. And I'll be posting that to our group. I think I have a picture meme of it too. Any other questions? I think no, okay.